we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Father, you still forgive. Father, you still make us do more well. At this time, may we receive this blessing. No matter how much we pray, the things that aren't working out, today may we receive solutions for these regrets. Father, we believe that you are an almighty God. By the mystery of God, may we, you've made us become sons. As sons, may we have our desires fulfilled. We believe we will do more well. We believe our children will be obedient. We believe we will be patriots to our country and our people. No matter what problem, it will be manifested. All the, all the good and evil that's manifested, all the wrongs may be washed away with the blood of Christ, and may only good appear. Is there anyone who's sick? May they be healed. Those who are suffering from Satan, may he depart. Because of my sins and my ancestors' sins, are we receiving disasters and curses? May they change to blessings, and may our children do well. May I have blessings in my late age. We believe we will receive answers according to the word. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. Let's find that. You know, as we live our lives, why is it that we're doing forced at repentance? And it seems like we're doing well and then we don't do well. We're not doing well and then we do well. What, what What's wrong? Pastor, you've given us this word every day. Why am I not doing well? Well, I've told you, a helicopter, when it's spinning in one hour, it's going, it has to have at least 4,000 rotations to, to get up. So you, you know, you know, this word, it's sweeter than honey. You, you don't eat that much and you say you're not lifting up. So when, when do miracles happen? It's when you have knowledge. This knowledge, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1, it's when you hear rebuke and you repent, that's when you have knowledge. Worldly knowledge, no matter how many doctorates you have, Galatians chapter 4, verse 9, it's elementary. It's elementary. It's so base. You know, if you use your head, that's scheming, Psalms chapter 5, verse 10, and you're ruined by your own schemings. If you, you can't see all of the, the Lee dynasty for, but what's really filthy comes out in dramas, it comes out in books, the writers, you know, they add things and, you know, they say this king and that king they fought, or the father and the son they fought, and they add all these things to make some, you know, drama. And so it takes time to read it. But if you look at the content, there's nothing there. It's just the rich, they become enemies. And to have many wives because of envyings and jealousies, you know, their lives are ruined. But if you hate to hear God's word, if you, if you want the sermon to be pleasing to hear, that's because your ancestors have committed the sin of rebellion. They've committed the sin of betrayal. So they're like, give us a sermon that's pleasing to hear. That's Isaiah chapter 30. So already a sermon that is pleasing to hear. All of the Bible is rebuke. 2 Him Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. All of the Bible is rebuke. Why? So that Proverbs chapter 12 verse 1. So that you'll receive knowledge. Let's first read Proverbs chapter 12 verse 1. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. Amen. So what kind of person is that person? Well, if you rebuke them, you know. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 8, once you rebuke them, someone who gives thanks, they receive blessings, they do well. But if they hate to hear rebuke, that's someone who goes to a fake church, they listen to sermons without rebuke, They'll go to a church that it has fake pastors, Luke chapter 6, verse 26. So already the children are disobedient. 
So the Bible, instead of rebuke and you make it something pleasing to, the, to hear, already the children are disobedient. They're problematic. Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 18. Not only are the children disobedient, but there are also problems in society. So what am I like then? Numbers chapter 14 verse 83, your life won't work out. Those people, instead of biblical sermons, they want to listen to the sermons of fake pastors that are pleasing to, the, pleasing to hear. That's what God has said. So, you know, psychology, it's so, it's so, um, it's so foolish. If you give the Bible verses to someone with demons, they never want to hear it. No matter how admirable they seem to be. They, they call each other admirable, but when you put them next to the word, they're evil. If you hate to hear God's word, then you are the worst of evil. A man, if they don't eat a man's food, they're a beast. So here it says, if you hate reproof, then you're a beast. If you hear rebuke, then you receive knowledge. So if you receive knowledge, then miracles happen. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 20. So if you want your disease healed, as long as you have knowledge, so as we live a life of faith, we keep talking about faith, but faith is a gift of God. Faith where I believe, the Satan is inside of you. So it's with your head like a dog pig. You're believing with your IQ. That's not faith. So he wants to teach us this properly. And that's why he's given us Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. Let's read Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs it down, but a good word makes it glad. Amen. This is one Bible verse. So here it's telling us what a man is. Anxiety. You know, some religions, they talk about mental anguishes. You know, these mental anguishes are what you do with your head. Anxiety comes from your heart. So anxiety in a man's heart. If you have this, assume, why do you have anxiety? Because of the sins of the heart. Matthew chapter 15 verse 19. Because of the sins of the heart. Romans chapter 1 verse 28 to 32. And the sins that hate to keep God in your heart. If you have those sins, then if you have this anxiety in a man's heart, so once you have this one anxiety, because of that, then you get these mental anguishes. So some religions talk about mental anguishes, but they're talking about the the beastly head. Where does that come from? It comes from your heart. And that's why Proverbs 4, verse 23. That's why life and death is determined by your heart. So if you're suffering, if you're not doing well, if you have these sins out of the heart, what sticks to the sin? 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, demons stick. They stick to your heart. So because the demons stick to your heart, they make your head filled with anguish. So because you don't know this, you know, people just talk about the mental anguish. If you have a headache, you're tormented, you've got worries. You know, there's many things that that will cause these mental anguishes. But it, it doesn't stop there. You will receive disasters accordingly. So if you've come here, you shouldn't receive disasters. Where do disasters come from? It's according to what you're worrying and being anxious about, whatever you're tormented about. Whatever you're tormented about, Job, even though he repented so much, he was he was righteous. And yet because of his worries and anxieties, all of his ten children died. You know, if all of your children die, how would that the parents' hearts be? And then he became a beggar. All his wealth was gone. That's Job chapter 3, verse 24 to 26. So they, this will happen to us exactly too. So what God says is, he says, please live without worrying. But as you live, you know, the more you have, the more you worry. You know, the more children you have, there's not a day that's that's 
you know, peaceful. It's, but God, He hates worrying the most. So why doesn't He give you blessings? Because you keep worrying. Even though He hasn't given to you your worrying, so if He gives you more, you'll end up killing your children. Just say you, you have a 10-year-old child and you give them a motorbike, they end up being crushed. You know, the child will die, so the parents take it away. That's what God's like. There's no one in this world who loves as much as God. Which parent has created all of the creation and given it to you? There's no one who can do that. Even if you're wealthy, you know, the wealthy, they're filled with crime and, and punishment. That's what the, the Korean word sounds like. So even though you're so wealthy, you have a look how they live and how they die. You know, there's nothing that remains that is, that is like a man. So if you have one anxiety in your heart, then you have so many mental anguishes. This one evil of the heart, that's 10,000 things. So of course your head's going to explode. And that's why people, they're taking aspirins and, you know, that's not how, how it will be solved. You have to, you have to heal the heart so that the sins of the heart, the sins that hate to keep God in your heart, if you let them remain, then disasters will come accordingly. So you say, oh, I'm worrying about this, then disasters will come exactly. So Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, God says, don't worry about a thing, but entrust everything to Him. But you have to know how to entrust in order to entrust. Well, how much is it? It's for free. With what? It's with prayer and thanksgiving. Prayer, requests, and thanksgiving. Have a, you find Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. So when you come here, when you come to church, what is it you straight away have to do? What is it that you're suffering from, that you're not doing well? You, you end up finding the reason. You know, worldly learning, Confucius, Mencius, there are all these people. You know, whether it be Asian ideology or, you know, all of what they do is they don't realize that they are liars. Romans chapter 3 verse 4. We're all liars, but they don't even know this. And then they make a religion. So that religion is a lie. So all they know is about the mental anguish. Where does this mental anguish come from? It comes from the anxiety in the heart. And that comes from the sins of your heart. So the sins of your heart, the sins that had to keep God in your heart. There's no religion that knows this. And even churches, fake churches, they don't have this. It's because of sin that we were cast out from the Garden of Eden. It's because of sin that we're not doing well. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 21. It's because of sin that disasters come. But they don't even know how to block this. But they don't even know that it's about sin. So, but God teaches us the sins of the heart. Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. Romans chapter 1, verse 28 to 32. God teaches us the sins that had to keep God in our heart. And then Romans chapter... Romans chapter 15, uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 28 to 32, he says, it's the death sentence for us and our children. Yet people don't know this, even though God, he teaches us this. He says, if you have mental anguish, you will receive disasters according to your, your mental anguish. And where does this come from? The anxiety is in your heart. So he diagnoses so exactly. You know, your your heart and your head, if you look, there's only a meter's different distance between them. But the hidden me inside of in, inside which is my con inside my conscience, you know, fake religions, fake churches don't have this, but we know that it's when you revive your three consciences that you know yourself. So that's when you get rid of all the anxieties in your hearts. And that means the mental anguishes disappear. So the disasters and curses, they don't come. So as soon as you confess your sins, Romans chapter 15, verse 13, he changes it all to joy. So if you're not joyful, then you haven't repented. I said yesterday, 
no matter how much you want to help the pastor, how much you want to do well to him, how much to your your family, your spouse, your children, you want to do well to them, be an obedient child, to be a patriot. If you don't know, then you're proud. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3. Being proud is to not know. To not know is to be proud. So if you have demons and you're proud, they never ask others. If they're rebuked, they never give thanks. That's how you can see that they have demons. Someone who is humble, they always ask and learn. But if you're proud, you do not ask. So the pastors that do three, four theological college, they say after doing this theology, Whatever they do, they always ask. Before that, because of their pride, they would never ask. But they keep asking. So after asking for a year, all these things they didn't know, they learn. But if you have this, the demon of pride and you don't repent, they never ask. Even though they don't know, they never ask. And that person is filled with worries and anxieties. They don't have faith, which is a gift. They don't have all joy or peace, and so their faces are all blue. So they, then cancer starts, their children don't do well, they don't do well, and their children don't do well. Even if you want to do good things for others, you have to know. So what is it that God's saying? If you have anxiety in the heart, already you have anguish in your head. So if you have anxiety in your heart, you will have anguish in your head. So let's say you've got a leak in the roof over here, but it's leaking over there um, near the window. In the, so does that mean you fix, you fix, you know, near the window? No, it's in the roof. So yes, you may have these mental anguishes, but what you have to fix is your heart. That he teaches us everything. So if you're not doing well, your children aren't doing well, and you keep getting problems, you have to fix your heart. So life and death depends on your heart. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. You have to revive your conscience. You have to become a man. So someone who's sitting here worrying and being anxious, if you have anxiety in your heart, that person, they've got mental anguish in their head. So it's hard to know that so anxiety in a man's heart weighs it down. So people, even though they can barely know that they have this mental anguish, once they know this, they don't know. It's anxiety in your heart that causes it. And so they go around asking for counselling because, you know, it's, it's the head that's at the top. But really, the problem is in your heart. It's all come from the heart. So God teaches us this, and he says, it comes from the heart. But you need just knowing that's not enough, you need to have the key of solutions. What does it say here? It says, but a good word makes it glad. Where is there a good word? Where is there good in the world? Let's find Mark chapter 10, verse 18. It's only God. And so that's why all these religions talk about God, but they don't work. Let's read Mark chapter 10, verse 18. What a precious promise this is. To know even this one thing. You know, God, it's not that you have to force yourself to you know, to endure. No, he changes the fundamentals. So you, you suffering, it's because of the anxieties in your heart. That's why you have these mental anguishes. These mental anguishes. You know, the mental anguish, that's the standard of the beast. They still don't know about the heart. If you know the heart, a true church knows about the consciences in your heart. If you revive your consciences, Whatever person, you'll end up believing in God. And that's why demons, they don't want to revive your conscience because then you'll end up believing in God. That's Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14 and 15. They're not my words. This is God's word. So you look at people who don't believe in God properly, their conscience is seared. If your conscience is seared, you don't know shame. You're shameless. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. 
This, you can't hear this in psychology. You know, those people who made psychology, they themselves are, have demons. They, they're the, the level of beasts. So what is it that God says? These mental anguishes, these headaches that you have, these problematic things. It's as soon as you have a worry and anxiety in your heart, it will go straight to your head as a mental anguish. So if you have this mental anguish, you know, even in the world, if you talk about mental anguishes, they don't know what to do about it. But Job, chapter 3, verse 24, 25, God says, according to what you, to, you worry about, it will happen exactly. If you worry about your health, you'll get bad health. If you worry about your children, it will happen exactly to your children. You wonder, am I going to, car, am I going to get a car accident? car accident? It will happen exactly. That's why we have to entrust all things to God. You know, as you live, you get these thoughts. They continue to come out every time then. Philippians chapter 4, verse 67, by prayer, we have to entrust them to God. So as you're driving and you get some bad heart, Quickly say, please wash me with the blood, blood of Christ. You have to repent and ask him to change it to blessings. You have to repent. Is this our meant? Let's read together. And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Amen. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. If you have anxiety in your heart, Already, your head, which you study all the world's things, all your experiences, this beastly head, this IQ, this soul, this is where you get the mental anguish. This mental anguish is what happens on that beast level. As much as you have an IQ, you know, they say in the world, as the more you learn, the more worries you have. You know, ignorance is bliss, but you still get the disasters. So you're like, these things that I never even thought of happened. You know, maybe you haven't learnt with your head and you don't have experiences, but things happen. Something bad happens and you're like, oh, I don't know why this unfortunate thing suddenly happened. No matter how much you learn in the world, there's nothing to do but worry and to have troubles. Whatever you worry about, it will happen exactly. Job chapter 3, verse 24. So because these disasters come, that's why you suffer, your body's not good, your, your, your family's not doing well, your workplace, you're not doing well. Even in your workplace, if someone's not saying amen next to you, you need to slap them on the, their ear, so at least that they can go to heaven. It's better you get slapped on the ear and block your disasters and curses. Don't let that person kill themselves and their children. True love, that's what you do. So what is he saying here? Where can you hear? Hear? The word like this, you know, other than God's word, you can't hear something like this. If you don't say amen, you ruin yourself and your children more and more. You, you're starting to get disease like cancer. Why, why do people with cancer, why aren't they healed? Because they don't believe. They pretend to believe. But if you did believe, if Jesus Christ comes, he can make what is dead to be alive, the rotten to, to live. John chapter 11, even Lazarus lived. So what, what wouldn't work? So you're lying. Because you're sick, you pretend to believe for your own profit. But there's two types of faith. There's a faith where you try to fill up your belly to fill up your greed. Romans chapter 16, verse 17 to 18. It's not that faith. So if you truly have faith, already the way you say amen, you, it's different. The way, if you don't say amen, you don't have faith. That means you're receiving disasters. And it's not just me that receives disasters. You kill all your children. Why go that way? Why? So what about this fake pastor who lets those people to go that way? Let's not live like that. Let's make them do well. You know, a, a young child, if they don't want to take their medicine, the parents sit on top of them and, and force it down with a spoon down their mouth. And then the child, they, they end up spitting it out. But the mother, you know, they, they squeeze the mouth so that it, it 
you know, so that as, as the child is trying to breathe, they just end up swallowing it. So why would they force them to do that? Because at least if you eat it, you'll live. But medicine is something that you can or you don't have to have, but it's only a true mother that would do it. Others won't do that. They'll just go like, oh, they don't want to eat it, just leave them alone. That's someone else's mother. The one that forces the child to take it is the true mother. So Pastor Park, doing this, does that... I have to do this. We all have to live. We have to fix our destiny. Let's live. Let's do more well. Is this Amen? So who is it that's the only one that is good? In the world, it's only God who is good. Who said this? Jesus. So it's only God who is good. So if you have anxiety in your heart, all that you've learned with your head, the IQ, the, you know, these religions that talk about mental language, that's your head. But the source is from your heart. They don't even know this and they talk about the mental languages. So 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 4, do they know about the three consciences in your heart? No. Do they know, do they know that life and death depends on your heart? No. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23, so we know that we have to to revive our conscience. So what is tormenting you, your worries and anxieties, all these problems, how can you change them to joy? It's with the good word. And it's only God who is good. So it's only God's word. It's only God's word. So it's only God's word that can make our torment, our disease, our business not doing well, our bad personality, our, our metabolism, all you have to do is depend on God. So the good word is God's word because it's only God who is good. So it's God's word that can change our mental anguish, our torment to joy. It, he, he will change it to joy. You know, it's such a good promise. Do you have to pay money? But God's word just... Come, it, we can't just make up mine. It has to come into my heart. So where where is the problem? It's our heart. That's why we have mental anguish. So where does this mental anguish come come from? It's from our heart. So it's only the good word that works. Where does this good word have to go in? Our heart, not our head, our heart. So what goes inside of our heart? Let's find John chapter 5, verse 38. The word has to go into your heart. It, we will do well. So if we know the word correctly, there's nothing that won't work out. Why do you live so with such suffering and receive disasters? Why ruin your children? Today, let's end it. Let's change it to blessings and joy. Let's change it to blessings. Let's change it. Is this amen? So if someone talks about mental anguishes, you need to say, you need to know the fundamentals. You need to repent of the sins of the heart. So to repent of the sins of your heart and the sins I hate to keep God in your heart with forced repentance, your heart becomes clean. So who enters your heart? Christ. Christ has to enter for God to enter. So if you do forced repentance, first Christ comes inside. That's Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17. What is the mystery of Christ? Christ coming inside of me. Because Christ enters. A Christ in Jesus 2 or 1, John chapter 1 verse 14, Jesus is the Word. Jesus is God's Word. So Jesus coming out of me too, that is faith. So if Christ comes in, the Word comes in. Let's read John chapter 5 verse 38. You do not have his Word abiding in you, for you do not believe him whom he sent. Amen. So if you don't have the word where, that means you don't have faith. The word has to go into your heart to have faith. It's by Christ, by forced out repentance, the sins of the heart, the sins to hate, that hate to keep God in your heart. When you wash them with the mystery of Christ, by the mystery of Christ, Christ comes into my heart. When Christ comes into my heart, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5, because Christ and Jesus, they're not two but one, the back of the hand, the palm of the hand, they want. So, if you wash 
the palm of your hand, the back of the hand comes in too. So, Jesus is the Word. The Word coming inside of me, Jesus Christ coming inside of me, that is faith. Is this Amen? By this Word, let's change it to joy. All our worries and anxieties are gone. Let's fix our destiny. Is this Amen? Let's greet the person next to us. Now we're living. Now we're alive. Now we're living. Oh, Pastor, it's good today because we're laughing as we do this. Well, yesterday we got to to scrub all that rust off. You know, if you if you try to rub it off softly, it will take you it will take you more than a hundred years. But you got to rub it to the point where your arm hurts and and all all that rust comes off. So if you rust, if you take off the rust, you don't need to to scrub anymore. So after washing, then you end up smiling. So today it's good. After yesterday, we today we're smiling. So why is it that you don't want to repent? So now we will do well. There are no worries. There are no mental anguishes. There are no disasters. We're living with joy. It's the good word, God's word only. That's why other religions they won't work. If you don't have the mystery of Christ, it won't enter into your heart. So it's by four-step repentance. Let's do four-step repentance. If you need money, God says He will give you money. Two Corinthians chapter eight verse nine. Jesus Christ was poor so that I could be rich. So He will give you money. Let's live by fixing our destiny. Our children will be obedient. We will be patriots to our country. Let's call upon the Lord three times, and let's surely make this blessing mine. Let's only receive blessings. Let's change all our problems to good. Lord, 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 Father, you've given us this precious key. According to this word, may we change everything to joy.